What's up people? I'm Zog and welcome to the step-by-step -step tutorial for basic power systems in modded Minecraft. Now the reason I'm doing this video is actually because of a comment. Uh, the comment is not the sole purpose or sole reason for me making this video. It, it is, it's a very good idea and I wanted to do it because of that reason. But this comment did initiate that thought in my mind. It did give me that idea. So I wanted to go ahead and just touch on that. Now Mike Hack, who is the person who left a comment on the last step-by-step -step video that I did, he's the one who did it. And I do want to make a quick note to him. Uh, you appear to not have a G Plus account, Google Plus. So I can't actually reply to you or I would have done so in the comments. But anyway, without further ado, Let's get cracking on this thing, here's shall we? Here's the basic setup that I did. Ooh, F1. Okay. So here's the basic setup that I did in the first step-by-step -step tutorial. This is just the basic IE, IE, AE2 uh, setup that I normally use. And basically, you have a drive here set up with all 4Ks. In the tutorial, I did not go through making all of these. Uh, the resources at the beginning of the video are not for this. So you'll have to kind of mess around with that a little bit. I believe I only had one 1K in there, but I do explain how to make them. And uh, if that's something you want to do, you can easily figure out what supplies you need and do that. But the rest of this is pretty much there. I did take out the inscriber that was here, but that's not a huge deal. But if you pay attention to this, this is what your system will look like if it does not have power, or it will kind of turn on and off like this when you don't have power. You'll see this screen. If you see this, it means you're running out of power or you don't have any power. And that's kind of the idea you're going with. Now, there are many ways to power this. The energy acceptor takes multiple forms of power. And we're going to go through three of them. Three of my favorite. Uh, and that's just kind of how I'm going to do it. But yeah. So this can take any form of power as far as I know. I have yet to find something that it cannot accept and trans... Uh, what's the word? Uh, make it into AE power and uh, power your system so don't worry too much if there's another power system you like to use you don't have to use one of these this is not all of the power systems but this these, these are the ones that i choose first of all you have the windmill this guy it's from mechanism and mechanism is not in a lot of mod packs but it is very simple to make and it's very handy it generates a decent amount of power and it is based on altitude the higher it is in the air the more power it will generate and they are very very handy the next is a few of the generators now I'm choosing lava because I enjoy the uh, you can set these up in a way that makes it so you don't ever have to keep your eye on it it will just endlessly create power for you they're not the strongest and uh, they will more than likely be replaced in any mod pack you play but in the beginning they're pretty easy to get they're not all that difficult and we'll get into all that uh, you know recipes and all that good stuff in just a little bit but the third is going to be the reactor casing react what no it's gonna be the reactor and basically what you do is you, this is a multi block structure you put together in order to create power for yourself and again we'll get into all of this but the basic idea is that if it looks like this it's not connected as soon as you connect the final block and it actually is a thing you know, it actually turns into a reactor. You'll see the casing change into that. That's the basic look of a reactor. Now, it will be bigger. It will have different things. And you'll see that a little bit later in the video. But for now, if you don't see these little lines and the corner pieces like this, then it's not an actual, it's not put together. And it's not an actual reactor. But anyway, the first step is actually making sure you can get, regardless of the power system you use, you need to be able to get the power into this block. Now, in some cases, like with the generators, you can actually put it right beside it, and that will be fine. But in other cases, such as with this guy, which I suppose you could still put it right behind it, but having a giant reactor right behind your system, it might not be the prettiest thing. So if you want to spice it up a bit, you need to know how to transfer that power to this block from a distance. And that's what we're going to get into next. All right. Now, I have three cables laid out here that will allow transmission of power. And the reason there's three of them is because sometimes certain cables won't connect to the machine you're trying to power. So that can be a problem. Therefore, there's three of them. For example, the RedNet Energy cables are the only ones that I have found that actually connect to the advanced genetics machines. Without these, 
you would have to use the, I think it's called the combustion engine, which is really, really crappy. I hate it. It eats through so many uh, resources. It's just, ooh, I hate it. It's really bad. Anyway, so that's pretty much why there's three of them. And uh, these energy conduits right here in the middle, they connect to pretty much everything else that I have found. Uh, there might be something else they don't connect to. I'm not sure. And for that reason, I did include a third, which was my go-to energy transmission cable before I realized that these were so awesome. Uh, but they are from the same pack. They're from Mechanism, which may or may not be included in the mod pack you're playing, such as the windmill, uh, which is windmill. I always call it a windmill. It's actually a wind turbine. Anyway, that's not important. So let's go ahead and get into the first one. So to make this one, you're going to need these resources right here. And this set of resources will give you six redneck cables. Is that enough? I don't know. But if it isn't, get this batch again to get six more. Now, this is the lowest number of resources you need in order to even make it at all. And you may or may not see why once I start making it. But uh, if you don't, don't worry. Just trust me. This is the least amount of resources you absolutely need in order to get any of them. And it will give you six. So the basic idea is that you want to take out your resources from the box first. But you want to go into your crafting grid and you want to put sand along the left and right sides, right in the middle. And top and bottom is coal, and then right in the middle is clay. And that's gonna give you eight plastic pellets. You're gonna take those and put them all into a two by two, which is going to give you eight plastic sheets. Now, without that full set of resources, you won't have enough for the top and bottom. If you see right here, each recipe gives you four plastic sheets. You do have two left over, but since it gives you four at one time, you will need that entire recipe in order to get it. And that's going to give you, oh, wait, put the redstone right in the middle. And then that's going to give you eight of these red net cables. So you're going to take those and basically make the stair step pattern right there. And again, you're going to have a couple left over, but that's not a big deal. And your gold goes in the top two empty slots and a block of redstone right there. And that will give you six of your red net energy cables. Now on to my favorite energy transfer pipe thing cable <laughs> that I like. This one is the energy conduit from Enderio. This is the one I like to make. Generally, I skip straight to at least the middle one. But in reality, you could go all the way to the third one. Or you could stick with the first one, depending on your needs. Right in the beginning, you probably shouldn't need too much more than the basic one, but uh, pretty pretty quick, you'll need to upgrade. But we're only going to go over the recipe for this little first one right here, and uh, I'll cover the recipes. I'll just show them to you for the other two, so when you need to upgrade, you can do so without too much trouble. But right here, this set of resources right here will give you eight of the basic first tier energy conduits. And these right here, don't worry about these. These are little shortcuts for me. I'll be grabbing those in just a second. But first, you want to grab these resources out right here. Let's go ahead. And basically, you're going to make the sand on the left and the right. The gravel is going to line the top and bottom. And then you're going to have a, a piece of clay right in the middle. Now, this is going to give you eight binder composites that you then need to smelt into... Oh, that's right. Push R that you then need to smelt into the conduit binders. You smelt them and you get four each. So this right here is actually going to give you 32 conduit binders. So after that, you want to take these right here and uh, actually, no, you want to take the iron and the redstone and you want to put these into an alloy smelter. Now, again, let me show you this right here, the conductive iron that you need is a one to one. So one iron and one redstone gives you one conductive iron, which is why you need three iron and three redstone in order to get the three conductive iron. That's going to go right here. So let me grab those out of this chest real quick. And these guys can go back in. And then what you want to do after you have your conduit binder, you want to line that across along the top and the bottom. And then you want to take your conductive iron and put it right in the middle. And that will give you eight of the basic first tier energy conduits. Now, how do you make the next tier? Well, you remember this recipe right here requires the conductive iron that you need to alloy smelt. You need to smelt these iron and redstone in here. Well, for the next tier, it's a similar concept. You still need the same conduit binder, but you need then you need to instead uh, put in the alloy smelter redstone, gold, and glowstone, which is why I skipped to it because all of these resources are pretty easy to get. Yeah, you have to get to the nether, but really that's not too far 
off from the you know beginning of the game so that's not too hard to get this is why i skip directly to the first tier now the last tier is something i usually hold off on just because it's not always easy to get what you need for this which are ender pearls now and you have to make the energetic al alloys anyway so you take some of the energetic alloys, you, you uh, put that in an alloy smelter with ender pearls, and you will get your vibrant alloys, which will allow you to transfer 20,480 uh, RF per tick, which is really, really cool. I like that. It's uh, one of the highest energy transfers in the game, and it's, it's pretty amazing. The last energy cable that we're going to get into is the basic universal cable. I'll go over the recipes for the advanced, the elite, and the ultimate universal cable, but overall, this is just the one you're going to need right in the beginning. Now, it is something to note about the transfers uh, of these cables, and it starts at a measly 200, 200 RF per tick, jumps up to 8, and then 32, and then 1280. So even the highest ultimate universal cable is not as good as the highest energy ender, <laughs> ender energy conduit. So this is something this is one of those things that you should probably only use if these don't work for some reason in my opinion if you want to use them hey that's on you but in order to make this basic one right here this is all you really need and again these are just shortcut pieces for me but what you need to do is you need two iron five redstone and four coal but you also need the metallurgic infuser which is really fun to say which is only four more iron one osmium two more redstone and two furnace so it's not all that difficult to make, but once you get this guy, you plop him down and you're gonna stick your iron right here in this left slot right here. You're gonna put two pieces of redstone right in the right, and you're gonna put two pieces of coal in the left. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna turn this iron into the enriched iron. And then what you do after that is you're gonna put your enriched iron, two more pieces of coal, two more pieces of redstone, and then you're going to drop your enriched iron back into this same slot. And what that will do is it will actually give you two steel ingots. And then you should only have one piece of redstone left. Then you go into your crafting grid right here. And you put one on either side and a redstone right in the middle. And you're going to get eight of the basic universal cables. Now these are very easy to make with this. Uh, you really don't need a whole lot of resources. But bear in mind that these are mechanisms. So if you're looking for these, check that you actually have the mechanism mod first because I know in the mod pack that I'm playing now in FTB infinity mechanism is not there so this these aren't even an option and neither are the wind turbines over there which used to be one of my favorite power sources but that doesn't really matter all that much because that will give you the basic cables now in order to make the advanced you need to do the same thing and basically make an enriched alloy now in order to make the enriched alloy you need to put iron in here and instead of coal in this slot you need to put a redstone in this slot and a, as well a redstone in this other one now it should be noted that once you already have a power system you can hook this guy up to power and you won't need to put redstone into this slot you can instead just put it into this one or coal or obsidian or whatever else this the recipe you're looking for calls for in this slot but this side you won't have to but before you get energy, redstone can replace that energy need. And you can just drop in some redstone there and it's not going to be a huge deal. Now, as I was mentioning right here, so you need the enriched alloy in order to get that. And you need those eight basic universal cables. Now, this is a concept I thoroughly enjoy. I love the idea of using the old ones to get the new ones. Now it is a, you know, I mean, you get eight of them. You're basically just upgrading them. You're not losing any. You just have to add in a single component to get eight of the next ones. So in order to get the elite, you need the upgraded version of the reinforced alloy, which is basically you need to put that enriched alloy. And instead of redstone here, you need to put diamond here. And it's still a one-to-one -one ratio. One single diamond will give you one of these. So that's not really all that big of a deal. But once you get this, you put that in the middle of a whole bunch of advanced universal cables and it gives you the elite. And likewise, you need the upgraded tier again in order to get, and you know, obviously the elite ones in order to get the ultimate. And this guy requires compressed obsidian, which is very, very difficult to get. Well, maybe not very, but it's a little bit difficult. You need a pulverizer and then the enrichment chamber and a, a few other things in order to get this. But we're not going to get into that. The basic idea is that you need the atomic alloy. Once you have that, you can get the highest tier 
universal cable. Now first, we're gonna go over the windmill, which is my preferred method for early power generation, mainly because it requires no maintenance. Once you make it and set it up, you don't really have to worry about it. It just keeps on working and giving you power, which is something I absolutely love. But in some of the mod packs, as I've mentioned, this isn't present. So if it is, then you're lucked out because it's really not difficult to make. But if it isn't, you're going to have to find an alternative. But basically what you need is a whole bunch of enriched alloy, which I've already mentioned is iron here in the metallurgy confuser redstone on the left and redstone on the light unless on the right unless you have some other kind of power source already connected to your metallurgic infuser and once you get five of these you can then make a basic circuit by doing the same redstone and redstone unless you have power and putting an osmium ingot here instead of iron and that will give you a basic control circuit and you only need one of those but once you have all of these you can take them out and you can make first of all the uh, couple other components you need for the wind turbine itself. You want to drop both of your gold right down the middle, just like that, both. Uh, enough for two of them. Uh, you want to take two of these, four of these really, two on each side, and then you want to take the redstone and put it in the four corners. And this is going to give you two energy tablets, which you need to make it. Now, those are going to go in the bottom corners. You're going to have your basic control circuit right in the middle. You're going to have another, your last enriched alloy right in the middle of the grid. And then you're going to have osmium coating every there. So the grid is only empty in the top two corners. And that'll give you your wind turbine. And then once you set this guy up, you can put it wherever you need it. And then take that uh, brand new power cable that you just made and hook it up to your system and then it will begin to receive power just like you see here next power source that i do want to get into is generators now there are a lot of generators available in uh, the mod pack if you or the mod if you actually get it extra utilities now in most cases you are going to have this but it is not an end game solution for power unless you have like a huge array going into a battery bank or something like that but in the beginning, these can provide you enough power to do what you need to get things moving in the right direction. Now, the first one you probably want to get is the furnace generator. What this allows you to do is to actually generate power, which I can't do there, but I could do it with, say, blaze rods, which I like to use. That was uh, mentioned in a com... Oh, blaze rod. There we go. Let's just do that. But what you can do is you can drop any burnable material, like you can drop coal or wood or whatever in there, something that burns in a furnace, and it will generate power for you just like this. Now, the other one is a lava generator, and uh, we'll get into that in a second. But first, we're going to go over here, and this recipe right here is the, bottom, the, the uh, bottom set of resources. This will give you one generator, one of these small ones right here. But what you need to do is you come to your crafting grid, you put that right in the middle, the furnace down in the bottom middle, redstone in the bottom corners, and then iron everywhere else. And that will give you the regular furnace generator. Now, for this lava one, the reason I like this is because it is entirely possible to set this up to actually get endless power using an ender tank just like this, which uh, it's not too difficult to make, but without the proper resources, it could be a little bit problematic. Now you need blaze rods, which means you need to go to the nether to get a few of those. You need obsidian, you need a cauldron, which is really easy to make. You need an ender pearl, so it's not cheap, but it's really not expensive either. And you're going to need two of those. Then what you want to do is uh, make the generator itself, and that's with this recipe. Basically, it's the exact same one that I just did, except with gold in the place of the iron at the top. So you put the iron or the gold right there, the iron in the middle, the furnace in the bottom middle, and then the redstone in the corners, and there's your lava generator. But what you can do with this setup is make it... Uh, so you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to keep filling it up with things in order to make them burn, to give you power. You can just kind of let it sit there. So how do you do that? Well, the best way to get it is to, you need to find a huge lava source. How do you do that? More than likely, you want to go into the nether. Which, this is what I've simulated right here. Now, you see it's covering it up with stone, and that is basically what the endothermic pump does. Now, this is a... It seems simple. I've already showed you the tank. So let's check out the endothermic pump right here. 
which is kind of complicated. I mean, there's a little bit into this one. You need ender pearls and obsidian, which means you have to have diamonds. You still need diamonds. You need the eye of ender, which means you need blaze powder. You need all this kind of stuff. It's really, again, it's one of those things that's not really all that difficult to make, but right in the beginning of the game, you're not going to have what you need for it. So this is not going to be your first solution for generators. It's probably going to be the furnace generator, but uh, it will get you started in the right direction. You want to make another lava generator, which I just showed you. And then you need a transfer node for liquids, which is, again, not all that difficult. But this is the setup that I like to use once I am able to in order to make maintainable, uh, well, <laughs> in, in order to generate power that I don't have to worry about. Uh, then you need your transfer pipes, you need your block of redstone, some lapis, some iron. It's not that difficult to make, but again, it's going to be something you're going to want to wait until you know you have the resources for. But what this is basically doing is this endothermic pump right here is pumping out lava directly into this ender tank. And what that will do is uh, send it via this transfer node. Well, more accurately, the transfer node is pulling lava out of it and sending it back into this uh, lava generator which is keeping the pump running so once you first set this up are you yeah you see you're full why are you full you shouldn't be full anyway <laughs> i don't know why it's doing that but this is going to be an empty yeah see oh that's because you okay never mind let's get rid of both of those okay so when you first start, or not, I don't know why it's doing that. I really don't. Anyway, so when you first load this thing up, it's not going to be powered because this won't have any lava in it at all. This will have no lava to power this to get lava out and put it into the tank, which means there's no lava in here to send in a generator. And it needs a kickstart, basically. So what you need to do is after you set this up, you need to take a lava bucket and you need to just right click on this guy in order to fill him up a little bit in order to kickstart the whole system. And after that, you don't have to worry about it. It'll just generate power. And then your ender tank over here, anytime you set up a lava generator, you can just put an ender tank right on top and you won't have to worry about it. You can just pull off your energy however it is you want to do so and uh, move it wherever you want, such as into your ME system. Now, there's something else you should know that this, it may not power your system for that long and I just broke some glass what I mean by that is once your system gets large enough now this system right here shouldn't have any problems at all really this should stay up without any question as you see here but once you start adding things onto your system it won't have enough power to transfer into AE and therefore power your system so you'll see your system kind of black out so it'll you'll see it up right here you'll see all your items and then it will stop and it will turn off after that energy cell is actually completely depleted. And once that happens, it'll go dark and you'll just see your system kind of glitch in and out over time as that happens. That's how you know your system is more weak and you need to upgrade this. But how do you do it? Well, Extra Utilities has added in some better things as well for this. Uh, as you see here, let's see, let's see. Here's the regular furnace and the regular lava. Well, there are other versions of this. This is the times eight power multiplier version. So what do you need for this? You need eight of them. So once you can make eight, you're, you're pretty much good to go and you can make the next step. But there's one other thing you need, which is not easy to get. First of all, you need the QED, which is another thing I'm not gonna get into in this ep, in this step-by-step uh, -step tutorial, but this is one of those things you can keep your eye on. As soon as you are able, you can get the QED. You have the gold, not too difficult. This guy requires a lot of redstone. You need a bunch of block, you know, a bunch of blocks of redstone for this, more blocks and some gold. And then you have this guy, which needs more gold and more redstone. And again, these guys, you just need to, ooh, they're, eh. it's a little bit of a rabbit hole for that. But once you can get one of these, you can then get the eight times multiplied version of the lava generator and likewise you also have this guy right here who also needs that transfer node of energy and eight of the uh, lower versions of the furnace uh, generator so once you have those you can actually upgrade these and they will send eight times the power but take eight times the resources basically it is eight of these generators in one block 
Now, you can also go even further, once you get further along, and get a 64 times generator for lava and furnace, much like you would expect, but this one requires the hyper energy and eight of those, which means you literally have to make, you want 64 times the power, you have to make 64 of the generator, which is kind of crazy, but it's 64 of them in one block, which is kind of crazy, but it is what it is. You also need a bedrockium ingot, which is way later in the game, and that's not something you're going to be able to get anytime soon. But if it's something you fancy and you really want the stronger versions, then this could be the way to go for you. And there you go. My lava is completely gone. Now onto the biggest power source I'm going to craft today. And uh, that is these guys. Let me put these away so you don't uh, even come close to getting confused. But basically, this right here will allow you to craft the most basic of reactors, big reactors. This is the smallest version possible. So you want to take all of your supplies, and the basic idea of what you want to make is, uh, let's just go ahead and uh, let's type in reactor. So we're, that way we, we're, we're all prepped and ready. So we can go right here and we can make the reactor controller. Oh, that's right. I have to push R. All right. So the reactor controller right here is what you see here. So we need to make a bunch of these. Let's just make, let's not make them all because we do need a few of the other ones. Let's make uh, that many. And then we're going to go ahead and take these back. Let's see if this is accurate as far as how many we need. But basically you're just going to make these as you need them. But we want to go in and do the reactor controller. So we're going to make this guy. And that was the recipe you just saw. I might have went too quick. So there it is. Reactor casings in the four corners. Two Eulorium, uh, Yellowite, or Eulorium ingots. To a diamond and a redstone. And then you also need one reactor control rod. Which is this recipe you see right here. Make one of those. You're also going to need uh, one Eulorium fuel rod which is this recipe, shift click, we only need one of these, and then we're going to go on and do the power tap, which is pretty simple, and it's that recipe right there, these are more casings, take these guys out, one of those, and then you need two reactor access ports, and that's this recipe right here. I need uh, one more chest and one more piston. So add one of each of those to your uh, to to the, the the list. Piston. There we go. All right. So then we can go back and we can do the reactor stuff one more time and get one more access port just like this. And the rest we just need to make the rest out of reactor casings just like this I already have 64 of them but basically there's eight more the basic idea is that you need 21 of these I believe is the number that you need let's make sure I'm right but we'll keep those as backup just in case so then you want to take all of these down into the bottom of course <laughs> all right anyway so here's your two here's pretty much everything you need right here so this, the, the way you set this up is the basic idea is that you want to take your reactor casing and you want to have a 3x3 three three bottom. Basically the size of a crafting grid right on the bottom. Build two up on the corners. And then you want to go across and link all the sides together, but leave the middle open. And you've got to right in the middle and you want to put one of your, uh, the only Eulorium fuel rod that you have. And then put your reactor control rod right on top of that. And then each of the sides uh, is going to have something. So in this side, we're actually going to have the power tap on this side since it's closest to what we want to power. So we're going to have the power tap on this side. We're going to go to the direct opposite side, have the reactor controller. And then on the left and right, we're going to have two of these. Now, when I place this, you're going to see this change into an actual reactor. Now, be aware that one of these needs to be put to outlet mode. And then on the other side, the one that is still inlet inlet mode you want to put the rest of your eulorium which i thought i had a, a few of these already but basically you can pump these in however you want uh, most things work transfer pipes seem to glitch out after a while um, these guys right here the item transfer nodes they i don't know 
I don't know if it's been fixed or whatnot, but the transfer pipes and transfer nodes, they seem to be a little bit glitchy. What I enjoy using is the translocation, trans, ooh, I can't spell it, translocate, here we go, these guys, <laughs> item translocators. Uh, and uh, these guys right here are not too difficult to make. They're pretty easy. You do get two out of it, which makes sense because you need two in order to, you know, for it to function. But uh, it's really not all that complicated to make these, and they work wonders for this. I love these uh, item translocators. They are amazing. But uh, you can use that, stick one on a chest and one on this guy, and that'll work just fine. And then this guy right here will actually fill up. And then if we go over to the other side, you see how it's red? That means it's an active reactor. Well, it's not activated. It's a deactivated raptor, uh, reactor. It's offline at the moment, but you can come here and click activate. And it will start to heat up, and you will start to generate... RF. Now, pay attention to the amount. It's only 264 RF per tick, somewhere around there. So you know that your basic, uh, you know, transfer pipes, the ones that we went over earlier that transmitted 640 RF per tick or 200 RF per tick, those are going to be plenty for this. But will it power what you need it to power? I think I got somehow got rid of my conduits. I'm not sure how that happened exactly. But let's just grab a bunch of these. Let's hook this guy up just like this see now it's green because it's connected to something and you can leave this directly into here and this should be receiving power without any problem now again this thing is not generating a whole lot of power but these guys can be made really really big and if you haven't seen my mod sauce series go check out uh, the last few episodes i have the biggest one you can possibly make in that thing it is absolutely huge and uh, it's pretty amazing. It is pretty amazing. But you see right here, it is all of it is going out, which means my theory is that this guy may not be enough to sustain it for long. As soon as you add too much else to this, it's going to stop functioning. It's going to start glitching in and out like I was telling you before. So this smallest one is good for very, very small things. It may not be what you're looking for in the beginning. But once these things get big, you can actually power everything you have in your world off of one of these and it's amazing and then you can even increase the power output by doing turbines which i may end up doing a step-by-step -step later on uh the whole turbine system if that's something you guys want to see then do let me know because that would be pretty cool i think but uh it won't be for a little while just because i am going to have to research and figure out exactly how all of those things work but once i do that if that is something you want to see then do let me know and i will be happy to do that for you but now that you know all about some of the basic power systems you can do in modded Minecraft, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click that like button. If you want to see more, then don't forget to subscribe. Comment, favorite, share if you feel like you want to. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you later. Bye.